Do you consider yourself militant? <laughs> I consider myself Malcolm. <laughs> I think when he left the Nation of Islam in March of 1964, he felt a, 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 to a great degree, I feel, a kind of a liberatory. He felt liberated. In fact, he at some point said something about the straight jacket is no longer on him. Now he can move and become more political. Because understand that the nation of Islam tended to tamp down any kind of political expression, to stay clear of that. That's what got Malcolm in trouble when he said something about Kenny's assassination you know, about the chickens coming home to roost. Got him into deep water. So, and then that precipitated a number of other moves, but he was already, as far as I'm concerned, he was beginning to step outside of that anyway. He saw himself in a larger picture and, and, and making a greater contribution. What will be the difference between your new movement and uh, the Nation of Islam? Well, the basic difference will be uh, it'll probably be more flexible. And uh, it's not my intention to teach among Muslims or those who are already Muslims, but to take Mr. Muhammad's message out among the non-Muslim so-called Negroes. Well, you will work then with Negro groups that are working for integration? But we won't be joining them, nor will they be joining us. But we will work together on any objective that we have in common or that will be for the common good of the Negro community. In Washington, Martin Luther King continued his political work with a group of senators sympathetic to his ideas. He joined the debate on the Civil Rights Draft Bill. Initiated by Kennedy, the bill was the most progressive legislation yet regarding African Americans. During a press conference which he gave on Capitol Hill, King saw an unexpected visitor at the back of the room. It was Malcolm X. Malcolm X always wanted to meet King and debate with King, but King always refused to meet with Malcolm, largely because he knew that if he met with Malcolm, support from the white community would be almost eliminated. So King had to carry himself in such a way that the support which he got from the world white community would not dry up. After the conference, the two men met face to face. This encounter that King had always avoided unfolded in front of the press and photographers. The meeting only lasted a minute, but these images that capture them side by side, like this photo where they're smiling, became a strong symbol of reconciliation between two opposing visions of the black cause. Those two people, Martin and Malcolm, symbolize something that is in all African Americans. Each of us has a little bit of Martin and a little bit of Malcolm in us. See, Malcolm represents that blackness in us, that sense that we don't want white people messing with us. We are the, they, Malcolm represents that fire, that fight, that refusal to let anybody define who we are. King represents our desire to get along with everybody, including whites. Our desire to want to create a society for all people, defined by nonviolence, love, and care for all people in the society. <laughs> 